Hi everybody, we're gonna call this the final video of the year. And I'm going to take us back to where we began. And that's with this, this equation. It's called the simple view of reading, but in fact, there's nothing really simple about it. Uh, it's, it states that uh, decoding times language comprehension equals reading comprehension. The multiplication is important because if one is slightly off, it affects the other and it affects the overall product. You can be very strong in your conversational language, but if you cannot quickly and seamlessly decode words on a page, or even phonologically uh, hearing it, your reading comprehension will certainly be affected. So again, decoding times language comprehension equals reading comprehension. So <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean for us? Well, that means that all of us in some way, I'm just going to check and see if I've got this right. Yeah. All of us in some way have to be comfortable with using that, that equation. Why? Because we need to model effective language use and effective decoding skills for our students. Students have to accurately and quickly, within a 20th of a second, be able to um, identify words on a page or on a screen or on a sign or in a manual. They have to be able to connect those speech sounds, those tiny individual speech sounds, otherwise known as phonemes, they have to connect those with words and word parts that are visible to them. And when you get your eyes involved, now it becomes phonics. And then all of that, all of that decoding piece has to connect in some way to the use of language in general, and, uh, whether it be academic language, uh, the language of your discipline, uh, your specific target vocabulary, your um, the conversations that you have in your, um, in your discipline, whether it be vocational or academic, poetic uh, language, literary language, all of this falls under the uh, realm of language comprehension, both uh, visual language, spoken language, um, auditory language. Without adeptness in... <laughs> Back we go again to the, to the equation. Without decoding and uh, language comprehension skills being uh, perfect, reading comprehension, which is the gold standard to coin a phrase, that's what we want. We want our students to be able to understand 100% of what they read in our disciplines, right? 100%, not 98, not 58, 100 so here are my goals going forward with you. I want every one of us to be adept in the 44 phonemes of the English language, or the Spanish language, or the Italian language, depending on your, uh, what language you use in, in your classroom. English has 44 phonemes. You and, uh, our, and I and our students have to be adept at manipulating them, deleting them, substituting them, reversing them, when you have that kind of a control of the language, then you, you are showing, um, you're, you're, you're showing us, you're showing yourself that you're now beginning to be able to decode that language. There's 44 phonemes in English. Spanish has a different number. Um, Italian has a different number. All languages that use speech sounds have phonemes. These are like the, the elements of the, of the language. They can't be broken down any further. And there are six syllable types. So what I want is to make you adept in the 44 phonemes of the English language or the language that you are teaching in your discipline and the six syllable types of English. If students can be made aware of the six syllable types and the 44 phonemes of the language and are able to uh, manipulate them at, at uh, will, then students will struggle less with, with literacy. So I think we're on the right track and I'm just gonna give you some data here so as we move down the line. Three out of four ninth graders this year scores in FastBridge met or exceeded the, the uh, norm growth uh, goals. 75% of students tested either in the green or in the blue. Three out of four. 
three out of four students, uh, ninth graders, scores met or exceeded normed growth goals. That didn't mean that everybody got into the green or the blue, but that meant they made distinctive progress towards those goals of reaching the green and blue. Green and blue meaning scoring out of the realm of where interventions have to start taking place. Another piece of data here for you from Fastbridge. Ha <laughs> ha, oopsie, oopsie. 68% of students in ninth grade scored at or above grade level on the normed comprehension assessment, meaning FASPRID. Up 7% since fall. This phone's going to fall again. So on the FASPRIDGE, 61% tested, tested in the green or blue, and in the spring, 68%. So we're on to something here. It's not a guessing game. Uh, there's nothing to feel out. Uh, science of reading uh, works, and all of us, all of us can be um, experts at it in our own fields. So again, going forward, my task is to help you get comfortable with those f the 44 speech sounds of English, learn how to map those to the spelling patterns of English, and teach you the six syllable types so you can teach your kids because we want our kids using productively the language of our professions in, in, the, in the classroom or, or in the CTE environment. Kids can't sit silently and think about this stuff. They have to be productively using the language. The last thing I wanted to say, I'm actually gonna erase some of this. Last thing is that I wanna go forward with with all of us, and some of us are already on their way, is with, with morphology. Working at the secondary level, it becomes very important that we become experts in morphology as well. Ms. Willis, what the heck is morphology? Morphology is the study of the smallest meaningful word parts of a language, meaningful. So for example, there's the word cat, and then if you add that S on to it, just that little S, right? That is a morpheme that changes the meaning of cat, right? Instead of cat, now you got cats. There's also morphemes like redo. Re is a morpheme. It has a meaning. When you attach this to a word, it, has, um, it, it, it changes the meaning of the, the root or the base word. Um, um, ology is a morpheme of sorts. And students need to be able to recognize that when they see an ology, that they're, they're looking at uh, something straight from the Greek, uh, the study of something. So those are, that's just a very quick dash through morphology. A few of us here in the English department in the ninth grade team were working with morphemes, working hard with morphemes with our students, teaching them the morphemes, not checking for knowledge, teaching them how to use these morpheme, morphemes, how to recognize them in the realm of the other stuff, in the realm of, oops, dropped again, in the realm of the six syllable types, the 44 phonemes. All of this goes back to our original formula. The formula that's the cornerstone of the science of reading is that all of these components must be perfect in order for reading comprehension to take place. Who's going to teach this stuff? We are. So I'm trying to get a PD together sooner rather than later about this so I can give you some some basics right now, okay? If you have any questions about any of this, let me know, and have a great summer.